Hello everyone. I have come on today for our live personal development lesson of the month. And I'm going to be talking today about how you can bounce back after a setback. I have five tips that I'm going to share with you in hopes that if you are trying to create a better life for yourself and move into the new year strong or even finish off this year strong, we still have enough days for you to make significant change in your life, then these things are going to help you. These are things that I've used in my own life. These are things that I've used with my private clients. And these are things that I know just based on studying successful people that actually work. This is what they do. Remember, success leaves clues. And so if you want to start to move forward in life, then this is going to be some stuff that's really going to help you. Um, hey, girl, this is some stuff that's really going to help you to move forward because I feel like a lot of the time, we are living in the past. You may think that you're future oriented. You may think that you have these goals that you want to accomplish. But the problem is you are approaching future goals, current life, making choices in your life based on what happened to you in the past. So what happens is you are continuously knowingly or unknowingly moving through life again repeating the past bringing the past with you instead of for good closing that door and taking responsibility for what happens to you in the future so i'm going to talk about that so five tips to help you bounce back after a setback number one is called the five minute rule this is something that a lot of successful people um Practice, and I'm going to tell you how I practice it because you may find that you lean on the more practical way that I do it. So the five minute rule means that if something happens in life that is upsetting, that is incongruent with your expectations, something that just is disappointing or even it could even be crushing, you give yourself five minutes to cry it out, feel sorry for yourself, just go through that resentment, anger, revenge, pity party type thing. But then after that, you have to think about a way that you can move forward. Because the, the real key here is that you don't want to get stuck in that. Every, we're human, we're going to go there, but a lot of us stay there. And that inhibits us from moving forward more effectively toward the life that we truly want to create. Now, I'm more practical and I have a lot of Scorpio energy. So I know that sometimes I'm not going to feel all the feels and be ready to move forward in five minutes. I think that's not realistic. Maybe for something small, I could do that for small stuff. But for bigger stuff, I have a different rule. Um, if it's not something that's going to matter in five years, then I may give myself a day. Like you could just take a break, self-care, wallow in it, feel all the feels. Like I don't even try to make myself feel better. I just specifically say, hey, I'm in a bad place and I'm having a bad time. And this is where I'm going to stay for right now. However, I do have a time limit on things that are more impactful. For instance, when I um, talk to you guys many times about my story and how traumatic and unexpected my divorce was and how it changed my life to where I had to literally build my life up from the ground up, I had to start all over. And in that instance, I gave myself the three day rule. And this was three days of, okay, I'm gonna try to talk to him. Does he wanna stay? Does he wanna go? Maybe this is fake. This is three days of, you know, we uh, go through things like, what did I do wrong? <laughs> all that kind of stuff that we do. And again, that wallowing, that feeling sorry for ourselves, all of that stuff. Girl, you get three days. Then after three days, what are you going to do about it? Because I can't control situations. I can't control people. But what I can control is how I choose to respond and move forward based on the things that happen to me. So if the five minute rule does not work for you, um, that may be a little bit too impractical, especially if you're going through bigger things like I was, then you may want to try the three day rule. After three days, move it, keep it moving, get it together. You don't get to do that anymore. You, you, you'll get stuck. And again, you'll bring that past into the future. All right. And y'all know when I get going, my nose runs. Okay. Second um, tip for you to bounce back after a setback is take responsibility. A lot of people don't want to hear this because when they hear the word taking responsibility, you feel like you're letting somebody off the hook if they genuinely did something wrong or impactful to you or 
by you taking responsibility for something, you feel like you're going to take all the heat and all the blame for what is happening. That is not how true responsibility works. So you guys know I like to give you literal definitions so you don't confuse subjective and your feels with what true responsibility means. And I want to specifically compare taking responsibility versus um, assigning blame because they're totally different. And you're going to see that even the way that you choose to look at certain circumstances in your life is going to determine how you move forward in your future more successfully. So when I tell you to take responsibility for the things that are happening in your life, I'm telling you to take or to act independently and make decisions without authorization. So listen to what that means. If somebody did something wrong to you or, um, your boss or you're in a circumstance that you don't like, it doesn't mean that you don't have a right to feel that way, but you get to determine if you're going to take an opportunity or exercise your ability to act independently to make decisions it just, without regard to what these other people do say. Are they, do they like you? Do they not like you? Are they going to show up? Are they going to marry you? Um, is your boss going to give you a raise? All of the things. Now, let me tell you what most people do when they're hurt or um, when they're in situations that are less than ideal. They blame. So I'm going to tell you the definition of blame so you can understand and see what you are doing in your life. Because again, this is guys, this is a determining factor for if you're moving forward successfully. Blame is you assigning responsibility for a fault or a wrongdoing. So again, you are assigning responsibility. But the problem is if you try to re assign responsibility to people in your life or to circumstances in your life and they are not willing to accept that, it does you no good to do that. And so you're looking for this validation or this appreciation or this appeasement of your resentment about the things that are less than ideal in your life when if they're not willing to take responsibility which is an independent activity, you are not going to get what you want. You're going to be stuck. You're going to be unsatisfied. You're going to be resentful and you're not going to be moving forward. So if you truly want to start to master the art of success, of moving forward in your life, of becoming empowered and really being in the driver's seat of your life and choosing how you respond to the things that happen in your life, then you do need to take responsibility, which means you are acting independently of the other people and circumstances in your life. That is power. That is not waiting on somebody to give you something or do something or not waiting on a circumstance to change. You start to act independently of all these other different things. Number three, and hey, Ankh, thanks for joining live. Um, number three, the tip to bounce back after a setback is self-reflection and evaluation. Here's another thing. Again, I can only use... Um, my circumstances, because a lot of things that I deal with, with with private clients are very confidential. However, what I see mostly in myself and with other people is that when these traumatic things happen to us, we often need to sit back, we need to step back, and we need to do a lot of self-reflection because what I tend to find is a lot of the things that have happened in our life that are deeply emotional, impactful um, to our life and to our well-being, there is something about it that maybe we dishonored within ourselves. Um, so for instance, um, and it may not be you did you dishonored yourself, maybe you just didn't know yourself, and, and so you unconsciously dishonor yourself that can happen too so I find that when you step back and you really do some self-reflection every opportunity or excuse me everything that we have happen in life is a lesson and in that lesson you can gain either information about what you do like information about what you don't like information about what could happen differently and information about how you can do things differently because remember like I said you can only control yourself. And so stepping back, learning about who you are, what you value on a deep, authentic level is going to be the key for you to create a life moving forward. I'll give you a perfect example. 
a lot of times things will happen to us. We may go in self-reflection, but li listen to the, the other two tips that I get, just gave you. What we may tend to do is wallow in it, see who we can blame for it. And remember, blame is not, I don't take the negative feelings out of the word blame. Blame just means who can I assign responsibility for the fact that I'm feeling or experiencing the thing that I'm feeling and we get stuck. And when we approach our future from that place, there is no opportunity for you to grow. Whereas if you could just, the three minute, the three day rule or the five minute rule, okay, I feel bad, I'm gonna let myself feel bad, but what can I do to move forward? What didn't feel right about this situation? Who am I? What do I value? If this is not turning out the way that I want it, what can I do and control in my life to make sure that this doesn't happen again? That is where you should be working from. That is where successful people work from. We all have trials and tribulations in life and nobody is experiencing a life that is devoid of those. Even if you think you may have had it harder than somebody else, we all experience things in different ways and react in different ways so what we experience may be very hard for us even though you think it's easy but at the end of the day are we taking the information that we are receiving from what we experience in life through our relationships and through our circumstances to be able to then check and adjust like a science project like transmutation transformation alchemy to become the best version of ourselves going forward continuously and so that's where that self-evaluation and that self-reflection comes from so number four tip to help you bounce back from a setback i call it one percent better or one percent different hey kathleen um, and what i mean by one percent better or one percent different is this all right so you know you don't like what happened. You're trying to figure out who you are so that you can avoid some of the things that you are experiencing and the relationships that you tend to find yourself in. You're trying to take responsibility for the things that you need to take responsibility for, which means that you're going to take power or control over your life and start to act in a way that is more congruent with what you want to see in your life. Now, I don't believe, I don't teach that you need to do this 180 and just totally turn into this totally different person because I think that not only is that not sustainable, it's also unrealistic and it can be overwhelming. I do believe that you should strive to be 1% better every day. Or you can strive to, let's say you did something where you got in an argument with somebody, try to be 1% better every day, 1% different every day. If you know that you want to be somebody that's in a loving relationship, that is very self-aware, very spiritual, um, healthy, eating well, the key is not to try to change and overhaul your whole life, especially if you have a problem with self-discipline. Because what you do when you do that is you set yourself up for... Um, success of failure and I did a video about that it's on my YouTube channel and on my blog if you want to see that because rarely are most people successful just going cold turkey and turning their hair going the other day or other way so what you want to do is strive for being one percent better or one percent different just put one foot in front of the other it doesn't feel like much but when you are putting one foot in front of the other, you tend to build a foundation that is more practical, more sustainable, and because you can check and adjust every time you do little by little, you can see what works and what doesn't, and that allows you to get better, ultimately faster. Um, and the changes seem to be more lasting. And if you think about this, let's say for a month, you just, the only mantra you told yourself was 1% better, 1% different. And every day, that's what you did. After the end of a month, you're going to be 30% better than you were at the start of the month. So that's still a huge improvement um, than what you would normally do if you just chose to do these big overarching changes in your life and then you found yourself failing. I bet most of you have done that. I do that all the time. Then I'm like, okay, I'm gonna start all over. I'm gonna start all over. When if I just did, it, took it slow and made it long lasting and made it meaningful and sustainable to what I wanted to see going forward, it would be much more impactful and lasting. 
All right, and then number five, you guys may not like this, but sometimes you got to get help. You got to get some help from somebody. It doesn't have, now if it's a deeply traumatic experience and you still find that you can't get through the cycle of blame or you feel like you can't get through that cycle where I said that you really fall into a deeper place, a darker place where you feel sadness and resentment and you can't get past that on your own and you can't even see who you are. You don't even know who you are to even self-reflect and get information out of that. You guys need to stop struggling with that. You have to stop staying in places where you're relying on your own self to pull yourself out when you are not running on 10. If you're not running on 10 out of 10, stop being so hard on yourself to think that you can do these things alone because what happens is you keep failing, right? You keep trying to pull yourself out. You keep trying to move forward and make better choices or you keep trying to figure out who you are and what your purpose is and all the things but you can't get anywhere because there's this big blind spot or this big cloud um and it's because you're deeper in the situation and so the last thing that i would say is get help a lot of people, even me, like when I, I had to get help specifically when I really wanted to learn how to take my business to reach more of you with a more positive and more powerful message. I was trying to do a lot of stuff on my own because I thought I'm smart, I'm capable, I've been through a lot, I could do this. But what I found was I spent many, many years struggling, running in circles, trying to get things accomplished on my own, um, doing all of the free 99, reading all of the books. But the minute that I surrender to the fact that I really wasn't making the progress that I wanted to make and I invested in help and mentorship and all of that stuff um, I grew I grew phenomenally I grew exponentially I grew very fast I grew efficiently because there was somebody that had done what I had done and been where I had been and they were able to help me get out of the weeds get out of the fog and truly move forward very powerfully in order to then continue continue to take that forward that person can take you from a one out of ten a three out of ten a five out of ten to a ten out of ten and that will allow you to move forward more successfully. And to me, that is priceless. That is priceless. So um, if you're not wanting to get help, I would urge you to reconsider that. All right, guys. So that is my lesson for today. Five tips to help you bounce back after a setback, to help you be more resilient. Um, before I let you go, I have Black Friday sales going on. Yeah, mentors are phenomenal, Kathleen. Um, I have uh, some Black Friday, Cyber Monday, all that stuff going on. They're going to end later on today at midnight. You have the Will of the Year tarot reading. That one is super, super popular. I almost felt like I should pull it off, but I didn't. And that's for if you want to get a tarot reading of an overview of your 2021. So you can take that information, have a month-by-month -month prediction and overview, plus these tips to be able to see what you're up against and still move forward successfully. And then I also, for those of you that like to binge watch personal development, I have a whole host of videos that are all put together to help you move through spiritual stuff, relationship stuff, all of that. And it's called the best of Yashika's intuition bundle. And then the very last thing, or not, not the very last thing, two more things. If you need help, um, and you hear me talking about getting help, but you feel like you need help and you're truly on a budget, like not that you're, I don't want to, this is not for people that are scared to invest in themselves, but if you are truly on a budget, but you still feel like you want to be in a community of people that want to move forward and want to be better and want to learn how to do that both spiritually and with personal development, then you may want to consider the Yashika's Intuition, the Personal Mastery Membership. It is less than a dollar a day. You're going to be in a community where you're getting lessons every month, guest speakers, people pouring into you to help you grow and develop. And at the same time, in a community of people that truly want to grow and develop like you. And then the last big transformation, because remember, you get what you invest in. You get the return on the investment that you are willing to put into your life. So there is a spiritual mentorship. That's going to be a small group of people. Maybe I'm only going to accept maybe five to seven people that really want to go deeper into their spiritual journey to learn not only about the tools that I talk about, like the crystals, energy healing, all of that, 
but learn how to know exactly how the energy of the universe works so that I'm not just telling you woo woo stuff to manifest or you don't just hear people telling you to manifest greatness. You actually know how energy works and how to manipulate it and work with it so that you create abundance in your life in every area of your life. That is eight months of um, like hands-on support and work to help you integrate tools and work through your issues. Um, and so if that's something that you feel called to, I would invite you to check that out. Again, if this, the fear is that it seems like a stretch for you, all I can say is that whenever I've done something like that, I've gotten my investment back tenfold. And so you have to truly think about the transformation. Don't necessarily think about the investment. Think about the transformation that you want to achieve. And you're not going to get high level transformations when you only want to invest bottom level um, money or whatever. Sometimes in order to get those bigger transformations that you desire, you're going to have to make a bigger investment, but it will always pay off. I, there's not a chance in my life. There's not a time in my life where I haven't invested in something and have it pay me back tenfold. So those are things, like I said, their prices go up tomorrow. Some of the um, things disappear tomorrow. Do any of you guys have any questions about how to bounce back specifically? I'm just looking through to see if you guys have any questions. Um, I'll wait a minute. Otherwise, I will let you guys go reflect on these. I promise they work. I promise that even if you failed, even if you think that you can't be successful, this can be different from you starting with a decision that you make that life can be different. And when you take responsibility and say that you're going to move forward independent of what has happened to you or what people have done to you, that's where you unlock magic and that's where you unlock luck for God to come in and help you and support you in moving forward rather than bringing that past into your present and into your future. All right, I do not see any questions. So upcoming in the group, we're gonna have new moon oracle card readings. Make sure you guys check out the full moon lunar eclipse. We just had one early this morning. That's more energy you can use to capitalize on. And um, if you guys have any topic ideas for next month, let me know. Otherwise, I will look at the list that you guys have already sent me. And I will talk to you guys um, around next month in the group, but then we'll also be doing some other stuff here and there. So stick around. All right, take care. Bye.